We sailed down from Mexico into the Rio Dulce of Guatemala, and we were now heading into a spot where the sailboat Sea Rooster could settle into her long-anticipated boat projects. Fronteras is a small town that seems to sprout up from the ground of a main roadway that crosses the narrowing portion of water of Rio Dulce. This is a congested toll road that connects a main shipping hub of Guatemala to the rest of the country, and so everything here is squeezed in real tight. The locals are used to walking their young children alongside roaring trucks and traffic as they go about their daily chores. Our first order of business was to reconnect by purchasing a SIM card for the phone. Okay, we have a phone. Well, you only have to use LTE because if, if you put 4G, they give you half the amount of gigabytes, even though with the same packet. How much was that? 150. 50 for the SIM card and 100 for the month. And now to start scoping out the marinas and the boatyards. It's a Merry Christmas morning. We had to get to a dock because our dinghy oars were not sufficient for paddling to and from land against the wind and the current. Our first visit was to the well-known Ram Marina, the largest and probably most well-equipped boatyard and marina in the region. Probably the most expensive too. And I say probably, specifically because the prices of boatyards around here are rather fluid. Look at that. Oh, it keeps on going. Yeah, it goes on for miles. We were here temporarily, just to take a look at the amenities. The chandlery has all your basic boatwork necessities inside, and whatever they do not have in stock can be ordered from the same catalogue that you would see in any West Marine type boat store. This was finally an opportunity to give the dog a real good run too. And the staff seemed good-natured about Choco, as long as any poop got promptly cleaned up. Give me Choco! The main office pointed us in the direction of all the facilities that we needed, like a laundry room and showers. Choco, what's going on? Is Poppy taking a shower? What's that all about? Why would anybody do that? Along the waterfront on this side of the river, yachts assembled for the Christmas Day meal, and immediately after meeting the small group and food shopping downtown, I started to feel sick. Oh, you make a tea? Yeah, I feel, you feel sick. I feel sick. Yeah. Tired? Yeah, I feel tired. I feel. Mm, oh, it's so cold. you feel bad. Choco, shut, no. We needed to move Sea Rooster to a smaller, less busy location. Luckily, this is easy to find in Rio Dulce. There are many small marinas and docks around. The bridge, according to the cruising guide, is 100 feet tall, but the wires are 75 feet, approximately. Yes. And the tide has been pretty high because we were able to pass over the bar without touching. So we're going to be extra careful. <laughs> I go with Captain John. Seda knew of another sailing YouTuber who was staying at Captain John's Marina. It's the marina. You, you can see the, the boats on the left side up there. Yep. Yep. That's us. Located on the other side of the bridge, another test of Sea Rooster's size. Captain John and I readied the dock and anchor lines in preparation for the Mediterranean-style mooring. It looked close! <laughs> all good? Yeah, all good. Um, we'll get some stern line ready. Okay, the stern line there you can have on. Usually a staff assists in the process, but we were showing up on a holiday without warning. Robbie backed into the slip without a hitch, and Seda pulled the anchor line up at the bow tight. No problem. We have the anchor line for you here. Yes. Yes, you're gonna need to pull, pull, pull. Pull, pull, pull. 
and feel tight. Yes, good. Good, good, good. Yes, pull, pull, pull. Hey, Choco, calma. No, we'll put a board here for you. Okay. On the book. Walk the plank. No, not in the dinghy. No, 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 no. No, not in the dinghy. Walk the plank. Walk the plank. Walk the plank. It's okay. Walk the plank. Oh, he has to be carried by his puppy. How embarrassing. <laughs> Our neighbor's boat. Our neighbor, also Turkish, helped in the process. This small marina is similar to many here on the lake and river. Simple wooden construction, offering power, running water, but sometimes, as in our case, no road access. The local economy here runs on small boats, and the heavy water traffic rocks everyone on the dock around. It's almost impossible to escape the wake, especially as you get closer to town. It's a cozy little spot, but you do need an engine to get around. So we teamed up with our neighbor, whose dinghy is popped, and put his working outboard on Seda's inflatable dinghy. Fatih is a diligent sailing YouTuber who presents his videos and photos to his mainly Turkish-speaking audience almost every day. Choko, Seda, and all of us piled into the dinghy daily to get groceries, as well as to explore the area for boating facilities. There are many docks in the downtown core, and tying up your dinghy to a cruiser-friendly restaurant is easy. There are many stores to be found here in town specializing in boat parts, materials, and general hardware to choose from. Robbie enjoyed the many meat grilled options here in town as well. Back at the boat, it was time for the all-important fishing gear organization session. You know, parakete, parakat. One big line, maybe uh, 500 meters. Yeah, with many hooks. Many hooks, yeah. yes, for deep side. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. We, we say uh, parakete. Long line or in Italian palamito? Palamite, yeah, like, yeah. like this. Robbie's go-to lures are hoochies, or these little squids, and he ended up trading a couple with Fatih, who gave Robbie a lure for his birthday. I think you will lose it in one day. <laughs> <laughs> when you go near Mexico, the barracuda will hit it, then you will lose it. Here's a spare. Because I know you will lose it, so... Okay, this is with double. Okay, it's okay, buddy. Thank you very much. The potability of water in Rio Dulce is open to discussion, as some folks seem to drink the water straight from the tap, while others advise only to buy bottled water. We think it's a good idea to buy garrafones of bottled drinking water, and only use the water from the pipes for cooking if it's going to be well boiled and or drained. We could find water at the fuel docks when filling up the fuel tank, or at the grocery stores, which also have dinghy docks. <laughs> <laughs> Choco does his best to be the speed police out on the water. But no one ever seems to listen. As we started to mention before, 
There are several options for boatyards here in Rio Dulce, including Nanawana Boatyard, which uses this particular tractor method to pull out the larger boats. And their accommodations for staying on land while your boat work is being done is definitely one of the more luxurious options. The pricing we received for the actual haul-out compared to, say, Ram, the first boatyard we visited, varied between being more or less expensive than Ram, depending on which employee you speak to. We made our way all the way across to the furthest haul-out location, first buzzing past the historical castle site. The Castillo de San Felipe de Lara is a popular local tourist destination. This Spanish colonial fort was built almost 400 years ago at the pinch point where the river becomes Lake Isabel. It was made to protect the shipping port located along the shoreline of the lake from pirate attacks. Apparently the fort would block off the passage between the lake and the river at night by running a giant chain all the way across the water to the far bank. So next to this historic site, there's a third boatyard, nestled into the corner with a small town center, just big enough for buying cervezas, sodas, and junk food. They use my more preferred travel lift method, and the prices quoted are very similar to those of Nanawana and Ram. In conclusion, all three boatyards want about three to four hundred dollars for boats between 30 and 44 feet for the in and out, and about two to three hundred dollars per month for the boat to be on the hard. Yes, Robbie's birthday dinner. Robbie's birthday dinner. But Choco's too afraid to go across the gangplank. Come on, Choco. You can do it. Yes, good boy. Yes. Yes, good boy. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Is this okay? Oh, yes. Easy. The highlight of being at this small, cozy dock belonging to Captain John is that we were allowed to use the barbecue smoker. Robbie was grilling up a meat and veggie storm as a birthday treat to himself. How easy was it to get this wood? Uh, well, I kind of like bought it off the pizza guys. <laughs> I was like, where did you guys get the wood? And it's like, oh, like, well, from the guy. I'm like, can I buy two bags off of you? I say, yeah. It's great wood. The sad part is like probably rainforest destruction. Right there. Yeah, it smells too good to it's be not. Yeah, it's really good what it looks like. A man grilling his meat was bound to attract the attention of our newfound yachty friends. Kevin, the captain of the sailboat Promise, who we followed through the river bar, came out to wish Robbie a happy birthday and then gifted him a stylish Hawaiian shirt. Thanks, Kevin. Our neighbors provided some tasty local wine, which we discovered was delivered to this dock by Ponga. In fact, many of the docks and marinas here are visited several times a week by grocery delivering Ponga, which offer goods at only a nominal added cost, which is super convenient. We took advantage of the good and relatively cheap selection of fresh and local produce available here in Guatemala to share meals with our neighbors throughout the holiday season. And while this may not look like your typical Western Christmas time meal food for some of our viewers, we were feeling thankful to be able to celebrate its abundance.
it down and just paint it. Any color I want. The bird's waiting for something. And with 30 quetzal, with 25 quetzal actually, I fixed myself three vapor as I was about to go away. This is what Choco does whenever Robbie leaves on the dinghy without him. Oh, my God. 